I hope you like the idea of doing structural analysis inside Blender. As a sort of a long, long time Blender user here, I've always wanted to be able to do this in Blender, so I think it's pretty cool. Welcome to another update on StructureWorks, my uh, structural modeling and analysis add-on for Blender. So in this short update, what I'll do is just give you a, a quick um, rundown of what I've done um, since the last update video. So the main things that I've implemented since the last update have uh, all been around um, visualization of results. So uh, the main thing really uh, is that we can now visualize a heat map of axial forces within our structures uh, directly inside of Blender. That was one of the big things that I pointed out in the last video that I wanted to get done um, and of course there was a few challenges along the way in terms of how uh, how this was to be achieved inside Blender um, but uh, I've overcome those and I'm uh, pretty happy with uh, with the outcome. Okay so let's uh, run through a quick analysis here just to get a sense of um, what's new uh, in this particular update. So we, uh, we've got a simple truss structure here so the first thing I'll do is we've seen a lot of this before so I'll go through it pretty quickly. We'll just select the structure that we want to analyze and one of the new things that I've done since the last update is added this um, mesh uh, representation. So instead of just looking at your structure as a wireframe, we can actually see a mesh representation. Um, and of course we can scale that mesh representation up or down. And we can add in nodes if we like. If I scale those up, you'll start to see them. Um, just a little thing, but it's kind of nice to be able to see, uh, see more than just the wireframe. So I'll just put that back to 0.0. .0. Uh, three for the scale for both of those. Okay, so moving on down, we want to turn off our mesh representation so that we can actually see the wireframe. We still do all of our assignment of sections and materials um, to the actual wireframe itself. Uh, so if I want to assign steel, I've already sort of pre-populated some um, properties here for steel and generated a new structural material. So I'll edit, I'll go into edit mode and I will just select uh, select everything um, and just assign steel to it. And of course we saw the last day that we can turn on our, our material number labels to make sure everything is as we expect. Okay, so moving on down, we'll go to sections. Now I've again put in two types of section here. I've got a uh, two different tubular sections, one 120 mil diameter and one 75 mil diameter. So what I want to do is select all of the top and bottom members to make them the larger diameter, those guys. And we're gonna assign those to section tube, section one, the first tube. And then all the internal, all the internal elements, we will assign those to tube two. And if I turn on my section numbers again, we can see the sections have been assigned uh, the way we want it. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so we can turn off our section numbers. So next up, we've got to add some restraints. All right, we're dealing with a two-dimensional uh, truss structure. And so obviously the default setup here within this add-on is to analyze three-dimensional truss structures. So I want to restrain this uh, in the outer plane direction. So I'll just select everything and I will say that I want the U, Y. So Y is the out of plane um, axis here. So I want to restrain all of the selected nodes in the Y direction. So we'll add those restraints. Now they're a little bit big, their scale is a bit big. So let's uh, drop that down, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Now, of course, we want more restraint than this. This just restrains it in the out of plane direction. If I turn on my node numbers here, we can see here that node number zero is gonna be my main pin. That's the one I wanna pin. So if I come over to my restraints panel and go to node zero and I increase the restraint in the X and Z direction, we can see that the restraints automatically update here. So we go there and there. And now that's a full pin. Now over on node 11, I just want to restrain that additionally in the Z direction. I want to leave it free to roll in the X direction. So down on 11 in the Z direction, I'll increase that. So now all of our restraints are set up. And so we're essentially, we're, we're using a 3D truss analysis code to analyze a 2D structure because we've added sufficient out of plane restraints. Now going forward um, in the add-on, I'll, I'll eventually set it up so that you can just set or specify a 2D analysis and specify the plane on which your structure lives. And then the sort of adding additional restraints to accommodate that will happen automatically. I'm not sure whether or not we'll cover that in the actual course that teaches you how to build this because I've been planning out all of the lectures for that course um, and it's quite extensive. There's an awful lot uh, uh, of material for us to get through. It's not difficult, but there's just a lot of stuff in there. And so, I'm not sure if we'll actually cover that, but we'll see, we'll see. So um, that's the restraints added, and then we can just go and apply some forces. Um, I won't bother applying self-weight to this one. I'm just going to the front view mode. I'll turn off my 
node numbers and I don't really need to see the restraints. So I'll turn those off as well. So let's select some nodes to apply forces to. Let's apply a force to the central node here. Let's go with 100 kilonewtons. So 100, everything, um, I'm keeping everything in units of newtons and meters. So 100 kilonewtons is going to be 100,000 uh, newtons. So it's going to be 100 E3. That's fine. And let me just hit add selected and we get our force added. And um, let's add a couple of more forces. Let's add two symmetrical forces to this node and this node. We'll make those again in the Z direction. We'll go minus, uh, let's go for just for something different, 75 uh, thousand newtons or 75 kilonewtons and we'll hit add selected and there we have it so we've got our forces we can check well we can see obviously the magnitudes of the forces on the right but we could also check with our force labels and we can see the forces are exactly what we wanted all right then so once that's done that's the bare minimum we need to do we can go ahead and hit analysis to hit analysis we want to be in object mode so we tab out of edit mode hit analysis and then we have our results so straight away you can see that we've got a force distribution here or a force heat map an axial force heat map but before i do that let me let me just turn that off and just go and look at my deflected shape first so the scale factor is at 43 i was been playing with that earlier on so let's bring that back down to 10 and of course we can slide it back and forth to get a sense of what that structure wants to do all right and so we'll leave that at 10 we'll turn off the deflected shape we'll come on down and we will look at uh, the member forces again so we've got a couple of different force uh, or color maps we could use we're currently looking at a jet color map for structures that are comprised of mainly tension and compression members a red blue color map can be nice so we can throw that on next and that gives us a good sense red is compression obviously um, and then of course we could turn on our force labels uh, so if we come in here and go to into our results section of our pie menu and go to member forces we can get a sense of what the uh, the different member forces are in our structure all right and then the other the other uh, force map that we could use is a red blue binary if we just want to know what's in tension and what's in compression and of course we see some zero force members down here on the end so that is the the big update um, since the last update video and um, this ability to view our axial force heat map directly the inside of the add-on and um, so essentially that's it and um, of course because we're in blender it's really easy to model you know much more complex structures one of the reasons why a structural analysis add-on for blender makes sense is because modeling structures in blender is really really easy to do and um, so now we can do the analysis some analysis at least in there so let's um ditch this structure and get something a little bit more uh, a little bit more pleasing to the eye i suppose you'd say so let's go back up to the top let's ditch this structure so we can basically zero out everything by just getting rid of that structure and that basically gets resets the analysis state of the add-on um, and now what we want to do is bring in a different structure something a bit more interesting i'll bring in a structure we've seen in a previous video which is this roof structure here so again we saw this guy before just a kind of an abstract roof type structure but again it's a good example of the fact that we can use blender to model in a really organic way in a really natural way it is really quite trivial really to to sort of start playing around with geometries and shapes um, and exploring different uh, different structural forms that's really one of the great strengths of blender and as an engineer why i really like blender because it takes me away from the more constrained uh, modeling environments that you can find yourself in as an engineer um, so anyway, getting back to uh, getting back to this guy. So I want to analyze this guy again. Analyzing this is going to be just as simple as what we did previously. We go. We're first going to select the structure straight away. We can get a mesh representation again. We're getting some some sort of Z fighting between that and the mesh representation. So to clean that up, all we got to do is turn off the wireframe, uh, and then we're left with the pure mesh representation, which is quite nice. Now another thing to say is Blender is another thing I'm playing with in Blender a lot recently is geometry nodes, and of course this add-on will pair really really nicely with geometry nodes because you can come up with any geometries you like and then basically feed them straight into um well not so much feed them in but you can then use this add-on in parallel if you like with geometry nodes so it work really quite nicely together so now we've got that um, let's come on down assign some materials we'll turn off the mesh we'll bring back the wireframe which is the, the thing that we're assigning all of our um properties too so if i tab into edit mode i'm going to select everything i'm going to edge select i'll select everything i'll come on down i'll assign everything to steel i will um just for simplicity i'll just make everything tube one uh, so i'll assign that 
I'm going to turn that off. Come on to restraint. Restraint is pretty straightforward. It's full 3D structure. So I'm going to fully pin the four sort of sort of notional support points here. So I'll come into node select, come into side view, and I'm just going to box select, which should pick up. Yeah, I am picking them up. It's just I am picking up the supports that were in the box selection. It's just that these supports are higher up. Okay, so there we have it. We've got our supports. Let's just add our restraints. Okay, and let's make them a little bit bigger so we can see them. Okay, so we can see the restraints on our model. And um, this time around, let's go ahead for our applied forces. Let's start off and just look at self-weight. So we're not applying any additional nodal forces. We're just including self-weight in our analysis. That's fine. Um, and then we can straight away go and analyze this thing. So I'm going to tab out of edit mode into object mode and hit analysis or analyze. And there we have it. Now we must have our labels still turned on our force labels. So if I scroll on down and I turn off member force labels. Okay. And I'll also turn off visualize forces for now because I want to start off looking at my deflected shape. So again, we're only in self weight here. Um, our scale of our deflected shape is 10. Let's make that 100. Let's see what this thing wants to do under its own self weight. And again, one of the nice things, one of the nice things we can do is um, start playing around with this and just seeing, just getting a sense for what the um, what the structure is going to tend to want to do. I suppose one of the things I want to point out here is that you're going to learn how to build this add-on. That's the whole objective here, right? It's for me to build it and then I'm going to teach, I'm going to produce the course that teaches you how to build it. The, the, the idea here is that I can't build every single feature into the add-on because the course would end up being like 30, 40 hours long and it'd be huge, right? I'd never be finished with it. But if we, when we get to build pretty much what you see here, once you've gotten that far, um, you, there's no more mystery to it, right? So you can then decide what additional features you want, what additional analyses you want. The key here is to get you to a point where you are comfortable um, building add-ons in Blender, right? It can be an add-on for anything. If you're a geotechnical engineer, it could be an add-on for I don't know, whatever geotechnical engineers do, I'm a structural engineer. Um, so you can build add-ons for whatever your workflow is, and that's the whole objective here, right? So anyway, put that aside for a sec. Let's have a quick look at a force heat map. We'll turn off the deflected shape. Um, again, I, your Pi menu is kind of a nice quick go-to place to play around or to switch things on and off. So I want to turn off my uh, nodal restraints. Um, let me see, there's a sinking issue here that I'm going to have to fix. So I'll turn those off. Come on down. Now I'm going to visualize forces. Okay, we're getting that same Z fighting between the mesh. So turn off the mesh and we're just left with the, the or turn off the wireframe or we're just left with the mesh. So that's the binary um, tension compression map. Let's do something that looks a little bit nicer and we'll go with the jet heat map. Okay, very good. So again, you're getting a sense. You're getting a sense. And if I scale up the uh, the members a little bit, make them a bit beefier, it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, and so now you could go and do the whatever it is you need to do now at this point in terms of identifying where are the peaks, uh, the peak axial forces occurring. You know, another nice thing to do. We probably won't do it in the course because it's again too much to get done. Um, but an obvious thing to do would be to add an additional um, map. Uh, which allows you to identify the um, axial stress because obviously everything here is the one is the one cross section they're all the same member um, and so the axial stress heat map will look exactly like this heat map but if we have members of different cross sections um, of course the axial stress heat map will will then look different um, to the axial force heat map you might then also want another visual sort of visual representation another heat map that picks up forces or picks up elements I should say where the axial stress exists exceeds um, the yield stress because we can specify the yield stress for each of our materials as well. So again, kind of the, there's, there's limitless possibilities. Once you can do this, as in build this, you can kind of build whatever you want then. And that's the real key. That's the real key. All right then. So look, let's, um, we said we've only got self weight on this thing. Let's make it a bit more interesting. And so we'll turn that off. I'll bring my mesh back. And let's add some additional point loads. Um, not for any particular reason or representing anything in particular, just really to demonstrate more than anything else. So we'll bring our, let's collapse down our results section. No, we'll leave it expanded because I want to show you that if I go and apply forces, I've changed the state 
um, of my model essentially and all of my results will be deleted because what we really don't want to have happen is we don't want forces represented up here um, that are out of sync with results that are represented down here. So anytime I change the forces or I change section properties, it should be the case that all of my results will be deleted. So if I'm going to apply forces and we select my structure, go into edit mode, deselect all my nodes. Um, let's do something randomly, like let's go into top down view and let's um, circle select and just select a whole wad of nodes in here let's come into side view mode and let's deselect the lower layer so if i go on to lasso select again one of the great things about blender is it's got all these really intuitive tools for manipulating and selection all right so now i've got all of the top nodes selected top layer nodes so now i can go ahead and apply some forces let's go and stick with let's go 10 kilonewtons in the z direction so minus 10 E3, and let me see, we'll just hit add selected, and that will add those forces to those nodes. Cool. Tab out of edit mode, deselect everything, and we should see, yeah, our results. There is no results panel now because they've all been deleted. So we can come straight back down, hit analysis, and we get a new set of results. All right, and let's now just go ahead and view our heat map again. In fact, before we do that, let's look at the deflected shape. So jump straight to it or jump quickly to it with the pie menu so nodal displacements no we don't want that it's too dense let's go to deflected shape and let's come into yeah so we can see we can see the um, additional deflection that we're getting from uh, from this uh, series of point loads here um Again, another thing that you might want to do is, you know, why not build in load cases and combinations? We don't have to just be constrained to do one analysis. Um, you know, an advancement, a development of this, which I, I'll probably do as I release subsequent versions of this add-on um, beyond the course. So we'll build version one of the add-on in the course, but I'll continue to improve and add to the add-on and be releasing that. Um, but load cases and combinations is an obvious addition um, that we might want to make. Um, so if I, let me, let me, come down to sort of play around the scale of this thing so we can again yeah we can see what's uh, what's happening as well over in the side view as well all right let's turn off our deflected shape come on down to visualize our forces and again our our heat map is looking a little bit more interesting let's turn off the uh, structural mesh there we go all right, so you're getting, um, you get the idea basically. We're at a position now where we have um, a reasonably nice um, little truss analysis um, built directly into Blender through this add-on. Of course, we'll build in additional analyses into the add-on, um, as I say, post the course. Uh, you'll build pretty much what you see in front of you here in the course. Um, and I'll add additional analyses to that as I release additional later versions of the add-on. All right then, so that's the update. Probably ran a little bit longer than I anticipated, but you, it does give you a good idea of where I am. I'm not a million miles away from releasing the first um, batch of lectures for the course. Speaking of the course, if you are interested in learning how to do this and building add-ons generally in Blender, um, head over to engineeringskills.com and there will be a link to the course page. Um, at the time of recording now, the course isn't available, but you can sign up to be notified when it is available. And obviously, if you're, you're on that list, there'll be a, a launch discount as well. So make sure to head over there and sign up um, and within the next couple of weeks I should be opening up the course and uh, with the first uh, few uh, sections which are sort of buckets of lectures on uh, how to get started with this and then I'll be releasing them um, on a pretty uh, a pretty regular clip after that so there you have it I hope you found it interesting I hope you like the idea of doing structural analysis inside Blender as a sort of a long long time Blender user here for geez a lot of years now um, I've always wanted to be able to do this in Blender so I think it's pretty cool um, right, okay, that's it for this one. I will see you in the next one.